Welcome to Happy Clubhouse, with a review of the Bandai Half-Scale Gashapon Machine Plus, which is a half-sized toy that's made to look like Bandai's new model of Gashapon machines that's began appearing all around Japan from late December last year, some of which has been seen near the full-size moving Gundam statue in Gundam Factory Yokohama. But you might think, well, wait, I mean, what does a toy like this have anything to do with Gundam models? I mean, you're doing toy reviews now? Well, not really, but the stuff we usually see here, whether it's old or new on this channel, is mostly things made by Bandai's hobby division. And there's actually an entire world of things made under Bandai's toy division that's really cool and related to Gundam, like the SD Gundam Ensemble line, which I've reviewed before, but you know, not really a whole lot of people have watched. And it's a real shame that Gashapon machines aren't more of a thing in America and other English regions because it really was a big part of Gundam in the 80s and the 90s. So I think this is something a lot of you would love to have at home to make up for not having access to more machines in the real world, so let's have a look at it. Bandai calls this the Gashapon Machine Plus because it's really not the first one they made. Maybe you've seen this before, but Bandai's been selling this half-sized toy of the older machines for the past two or so years, which looks like this right here. And if you have one of those machines, you'll notice, hey, why is mine here green? Well yeah, Bandai sold these over a decade ago, sometime around 2007, I can't be sure, in several different colors, including this green one here that I got from mainland China. These were a limited release, and the more modern re-release is only in white, which is a little disappointing. But anyway, these are supposed to be the same product line, if you can call it that. And this Gashapon Machine Plus was released in Japan in mid-December 2020, and it sold for a price of 7,590 yen. The massive box measures a bulky 25 by 33 by 21.5 centimeters, and this too comes only in white. The front of the box has the actual thing in a photo, and I don't really think the box needs an illustration since this is a real world thing. They mention that it's Bandai's official Gashapon Machine Plus since this style of machine is rented out by Bandai, and I think you're only allowed to sell Bandai products in them. The side here tells us the size of the actual unit, and then it shows you that it does come with 12 of these weird little solid red capsules. I know the older machine had these too, but my even older one has clear ones like what you'd actually find in a real machine at the time. Then they tell you that this comes with 4 imitation coins that you can use with it. Up top, they show you some suggested uses for this, but I think if we just let kids manhandle our machines, you know, they're gonna twist the handle like a maniac and all the gears inside are gonna break. So, you know, crazy collector people, like you and me, we're not gonna let people touch anything, no. The other side has the same information once again, so clearly they don't really have a whole lot to say about this machine. And down lower, they tell you that this works with all kinds of Japanese coins, and they do mean Japanese ones, since none of my Hong Kong ones work. They're either too fat, or they're too tall, or they're too weird shape, and yeah, our $2 coin looks all squiggly like that. Next to it, they tell you that you can make your own display card for the machine, and that the template is available for download, and you can find the link in the description. On the back, yeah, it's the same thing for the third time. And I mean, at this point, either you're sold on this machine or you're putting it back onto the shelf. Bandai's got nothing more to sell you on this. Oh, and there's a top two, and guess what's there? You can pause for a second if you need time to think about it. You good? Yep. Opening up the box, we're greeted with the capsules that are tucked inside two bags. And then we get a bag containing the imitation coins on a runner, and then all the printed materials. Down below, we get the main body of the machine with all the stickers pre-applied for you in the factory, and then a base and a lid that's sandwiched together. For printed materials, we get a folded A4 sheet of instructions that doesn't really have much that the box didn't already tell you, and it's only printed on one side. The other item you get is this pre-made display card, but mine here came up all creased and a little battered like this, which is really disappointing, and I really hope the other units don't have this problem. You get the lid and the bottom that's stacked together like this, and they're actually two different parts, so you're gonna have to pull them apart before you can use them. The bottom goes on the bottom, and the top goes on the top. The machine's for 6 year old and up, so it's not that hard to figure out. And if you have two of these, you can leap off the lid and the bottom, and they actually stack. I mean, of course, you're supposed to have two of them in the same style, but apparently the old and new ones do fit together mechanically. The coins are molded on runners with touch gates, so Bandai is really taking good care of the younger fans who are going to be buying this. And these coins are made to look like Japanese 50 yen coins with that hole in the middle, but the diameter is the same as a 100 yen coin. I'm sure it's more fun with real coins, but I'm certainly not complaining if Bandai wants to make sure that you've got everything you need right here inside the box. 
The capsules you get are all red, and each half has holes on them so they close up nicely. They're Bandai's standard smaller size capsules, but you see these less and less nowadays from machines, and instead you get the bigger ones like this one right here. And here, it's nice that they help you apply all the stickers right from the factory, because there really are some big ones like this one here on the side, which a younger owner is going to have a lot of trouble lining up straight. Or this round one at the front, which really has to be aligned properly, or else the entire machine isn't going to look very good. But unfortunately, some of the stickers, like this one right here, are a bit tilted, and maybe you need to carefully take them off and reapply them. And while we're looking at the body, the price sticker here just as a generic one coin. The older machine has a circle here that gives you an actual price. The Japanese version even has inserts so you can change the price that they show, but that's all been omitted on the new machine, and we don't even get any real world currency here. While we're nitpicking, this coin chute panel here and this lock are supposed to be metal on a real machine, and on my old machine, these pieces are chromed. And you can see they're actually separate parts on the machine itself, so these weren't chrome just for cost reasons, which really is a shame. They did mold a coin return button here, but it's just decorative and it's non-functional. And the coin shoot itself is also just a representation. But otherwise, the exterior of the machine is built like a tank. This plastic seems to be ABS, but whatever it is, it's really, really thick. I mean, it can be knocked around and it's gonna stay in one piece. The bottom and the lid are designed in such a way that there really aren't any panels or pegs that are gonna snap off easily. But as with the inner mechanisms, I'm not so sure they're as strong. You see, even if you don't put a coin into the machine, you can still turn the handle, but it makes this terrible snapping sound from the ratchets inside, and the machine really doesn't like it. So, if you have a really young person playing with this, or there's an obnoxious house guest that's turning this thing like crazy, I think this will break easily. But let's see how this machine works when it's used properly. So you take off the lid, and then you put in some capsules. So we're gonna use these two as demonstration. Then you close it back up, and then you put in a compatible coin which unlocks the turn handle. Then you can crank the handle, and you're gonna hear the ratchets inside as you turn. The clicking on a real machine are more frequent and it feels a lot smoother when you turn it, but you know, this is just a representation of the real thing. Rotate it a full circle and out comes a capsule. You can see that the arms inside will make sure that another capsule is lined up for your next turn. The coins are collected in a tray inside the machine, which you can pull out from the back and get all your money back. And maybe you're wondering, well, sure, your stupid Hong Kong money is not gonna work, but what about some superior American money? Well, let's investigate. A quarter fits okay, but it's a little hard to get into the slot, but still, it will work fine with the machine. A nickel looks like it'd be too short, but it ends up working fine as well. A penny goes into the slot fine, but it immediately jammed on the machine, and I had a hard time prying it out, so really don't try this at home. I didn't test the dime since it would have been the same as a penny, and I don't want to fix my machine a second time. So there you go. If you import this, it's gonna work okay with some US coins. And as mentioned earlier, the display card is available online through Bandai's specialized site, which I've included in the descriptions below. You can find some pre-made ones for some special occasions like weddings or birthday parties, and they're all in PDF format, so they'll most likely print in the proper size. There's also a blank one for you to add your own artwork with something like Photoshop, but they actually put in the wrong one here. You see, this one is for the older machine, and the shape of the card for the new machine is a little bit different. It's unfortunate, but you'll need a bit of graphics editing know-how to alter one of these templates if you want to make your own. And that's exactly what I set out to do. Of the several real display cards that I do have in my collection, I picked out this Mobile Suit Ensemble Part 6 one to put into my machine. I scanned it into Photoshop, and I fitted it into the outline that I took from one of the pre-made cards from the website. Then it was just a simple matter of printing it out, and then cutting it out along the lines. And in the end, we have a good representation of a machine you'd find out in the store. Now here we run into the biggest problem of this machine. You see, my old machine here, well, it's old. It's from a decade ago. And since then, Gashapon capsule sizes have grown a lot. They're way too fat to fit into this machine. So what's the fun if you can't stock your machine with your favorite modern toys? 
I mean, maybe it's a limitation of the size that they had to make this machine in, but I really thought they made this new machine specifically so that it would work with the bigger and newer capsules. So to me, it feels like a really big missed opportunity for Bandai here. But with all that said, here's a Hobby Clubhouse 3.0 verdict on the Bandai half-size Gachapon Machine Plus. Number one, it's an update in style, but not in function. It may have an updated look, but it only works with the small capsules like the older machine. I imagine many people will excitingly get a bunch of their favorite Gashiban capsules in hope of filling their machine at home, only to find that it just won't work. This really limits the appeal of this machine, and there's just no getting around that. And number two, it's made with quality materials. The plastic on this machine is thick, and for Bandai, the cost goes up exponentially by making it that thick. And you won't worry about this machine falling apart on you when you handle it. But speaking of handles, the inner mechanism doesn't inspire as much confidence, and they feel like the weak link that's going to be the first to fail and it's going to render this toy useless. Now, to be fair, I don't know that for sure, but I do enjoy my machine enough to not want to do a stress test. And number three, it's a fun, geeky decoration. I may nitpick this machine a lot, but in the end, I think this is a good purchase. It's cute, and it's unusual, and you're gonna get a lot of people asking you about it or asking to try it out. And even seeing it yourself from time to time is gonna bring you a lot of enjoyment. So it is a good product, and it's something that you're gonna want to decorate your home with. So that's a review for Bandai's new half-size Gachapon machine. It did cut some corners, but it still ends up being something Gundam fans would appreciate and I think would enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. Come look us up on social media with updates on upcoming videos and future projects. Links are in the description below. Or hang out here a bit longer with one of these other videos. But before you go, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos from Hobby Clubhouse, and I'll see you next time.